Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About House. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, so today we're going to talk about, we're going to do a shameless housing crash video <laughs> because I another housing crash quote came up. Uh, but before we get started, if you are buying or selling a house in Las Vegas, you need to contact us. Our information is in the description. If you're buying or selling a house anywhere, you also need to contact us. Uh, we have a great network of agents through a startup called Referral Cloud, mm -hmm. which Juan happens to be the CEO of. Mm. And um, we will find you a great agent in that market. Okay, so Juana, here's the situation. I'm on Twitter, X, and all of a sudden I see this housing crash tweet. We're going to talk about it. So, okay, one question. Yeah. It's now X, it's not Twitter. When it was Twitter, they were tweets. Now that it's X, are they X's? I think they're called X posts. That doesn't have a, it's not catchy. It's not catchy. Okay. <laughs> so we'll call it a tweet. We'll call it whatever. Four, this tweet had 437,000 views, about 2,000 likes and 433 retweets and almost 700 comments. This is just when I snapshotted it. Okay. So I'll throw it up on the screen and we'll go talk about it here. Okay. Um, it says here, and I don't think this is a person with a ton of, this just went viral. Okay, it says a friend purchased a home in 2017. He thought a 4.5% mortgage was too high and opted for an adjustable rate mortgage when they dropped below 3%. No one ever foresaw 8% mortgages back then. A home foreclosure crisis is on the horizon. Stop saying the economy is booming. Okay, um, and then we'll go down here and look at the numbers. So at the time, they were at 6.75% because remember, this thing's adjust every year. And the new adjustment took them from a $3,900 payment up to a $4,200 payment at a 7.8% interest rate. So basically, if, and if you read further down here, it says the, um, first of all, the rate can't, can't go higher than 8.5% and that the margin is 2.75% over the uh, Federal Reserve rates. Okay, Juana, let's talk about this first of all. Oh, can I just kind of go up? off on my own for a little bit. Yeah, go off on your own. Okay, a couple things. First, from 2017 to today, this person had ample opportunity to refinance and lock in a rate. So the fact that this person chose not to do that, that was their financial choice. Number two, I only have two points on this, so relax. Uh, That's perfect. <laughs> so number two, to say that this is a financial crisis is like saying that, oh, the people who win the lottery should have their money managed for them because most of them are broke within five years. It's the same kind of thing. Look, people who can't manage money, I'm so sorry, but that does not equate to a financial crisis for the whole world. That's it. I'm done. Okay. First of all, let's, we'll go through some stats here. Okay. In 2017, only, ready for this, 2%. Of all loans were adjustable rate mortgages, mm -hmm. and the only products that were still being offered were a five or a seven. So my guess is this person had a got a five one arm. Mm -hmm. Yes, the five one arm would have had a lower initial rate. It'd been the lowest rate you could have got was a five one arm. A seven one arm would have been a little bit higher rate. They probably got a five one arm because it was like a percent less than the going rate for thirty year fixed, which is you see you can see it was at six point seven five percent and it adjusted again. Okay. Of the people who bought in 2017, of these whole 2% of the people, first of all, some of them have sold already. Mm -hmm. A lot of them refied when they realized they could fix the rate at 2.5% mm -hmm. or 2.75% or something much lower, right? But Juana, how would a home foreclosure crisis happen on somebody who bought a house in 2017? How much equity would the average homeowner have if they bought a house in 2017? And seven years have passed. What do you think the average home is worth? And this is obviously not a low-end home because their mortgage payment's relatively high. So it's probably like they probably paid three, four, five hundred thousand for the house back then. Right. So we're not going to assume that this home is in a market that's been very stable and they have not had substantial appreciation. Let's pick a market we know. Okay. Let's pick Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Haha. -ha. Let's pick Las Vegas. So if they paid, let's say, four hundred thousand for the house uh, back in twenty seventeen, that house today is probably worth somewhere around eight hundred thousand. 
And I'm not just picking a number out of nowhere. I actually was having a chat with somebody yesterday. Was it yesterday? Day before yesterday. Um, day before yesterday. And he was telling me that same kind of thing. He paid something like three something, four something for his house. Uh, at the top of the market uh, a few months ago, it was worth uh, 900000 Now it has settled down to somewhere in the $800 plus thousand dollar range. So that's my point. Okay. And he bought his house about that time. And he happens to have one of these uh, 3% mortgages. And to his point, he is never, ever selling. The only way he's going to sell is uh, if he's moving someplace like the Carolinas where he can get you know, the big house on the lake for what he paid for, for the house in Vegas. Right. Um, the idea that there would be a crisis, foreclosure crisis, because your home payment went up 300 bucks mm -hmm. in a year is a bit ridiculous. But the fact that he bought the house in 2017, he could just sell it. Look, if he goes, look, I can't afford $4,200 a month. He could just sell the house and become a, and, Ooh, and cash yeah. out. Okay, so he doesn't have to sell the house. Okay. He can refinance the house because his rate won't be any higher than, than, than the current rate. And when he refinances the house, it'll actually be a lower payment because of all the principal he's paid down. So actually, if he refinanced the house and had the exact same interest rate that he has now, his payments would be lower because of the principal that he's paid down. If you were in, if you were in Vegas and you were in the situation where your payment is too high, but you bought your home, say, 2019 or earlier, and you have a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars of equity, but you just don't want to deal with the payment. We will glad, gladly take over your payment for you. We will even give you ten thousand dollars to move out of your house. <laughs> You'll just sign over the house to us, and we will take over your super high mortgage payment. Of course, that's not what we'll do. We'll just sell the house and take all the money. <laughs> the idea that this is going to cause a home foreclosure crisis. First of all, almost nobody got these loans because people realized that the margin between a fixed rate loan and a um, the variable loan actually wasn't that much. Um, and 4.5% was pretty high for a loan in 2017, but certainly the you didn't get under 3% uh, if you did have adjustable back then. Mm -hmm. There wasn't that big of a split uh, between the rates. No, but soon, soon thereafter, interest rates went to 3%. And and there was ample opportunity to refinance. And like I said, even if this person refinanced today and had the same interest rate that they already have, they would have a lower payment because of the equity. So because they'd be financing less money, so they would, and it'd be again over 30 years, so they would have a lower payment. Yeah, the whole point, the whole idea between this post is not to make fun of this person, but it's pretty obvious that pe there's like hyperbole when you intentionally mm -hmm. overstate something. Right. But then there's this where you're literally don't completely have no understanding of how housing works, of how mortgages work, of how the economy works. You don't understand macroeconomics. You don't even understand the simple fact that someone who bought a house in 2017 has a ton of equity. Like Juana said, they could just do a regular refi with the, the amount of equity they have in the house. They get a smoking rate. And even their fixed rate would probably be less than the 6.75, which is what they had. They would have even a month lower payment. But even if they had the same exact interest rate, the seven and changes, which which is what this is going to, even if they had the same exact interest rate, their payment would still be lower because it's a refinance. So it's again over thirty years, and it's only on the principal balance, not on the initial principal balance, which is so the principal balance today is less than it was in twenty seventeen when they purchased the home. And even if a hundred percent of the people got just for adjustable rate notes in 2017, which is only 2%, mm -hmm. even if none of them refied or have sold since then, you're still not going to have this you know, wave of foreclosures. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's just not, there's not with all these people would have a ton of equity. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that was kind of fun. Hope you had a good time too. Uh, if you have comments that are real estate related, please leave them down below. We appreciate them. Remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video. And uh, if you want to give us ideas for videos, we welcome them. Put them in the comments. Absolutely. If you are interested in buying or selling, please get in touch with us. We'd love to work with you. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.